blacked out a little. It kind of, uh, I was, uh, I don't remember much from the screening. I remember a few laughs, which uh, I was surprised with, pleasantly surprised, um, and a few gasps and stuff like that. It's a fable that happens in a nowhere land. It's a metaphor about relationships between father and son. It's about how you, as a kid, you need at a certain point to kill the father and rebel against what you've been taught. It's uh, very modern and unfortunately, I think it can apply on, on many levels on what we see on television lately, for example. I definitely said yes to the movie because of the shorts. I was uh, in the south of France and I received them. And before I even read the script, really, I've, I've seen the shorts and I was like, this is a very interesting director. And uh, when I heard he was only 27 at the time, or something like that, he's 29, you know. And uh, I, I uh, was very attracted to the idea of working with him, you know. I thought there was something very stylish about it and very mature. I was initially inspired by an article that uh, uh, I read about child assassins in Colombia. And uh, there was something in that story and the interviews with those kids and how little connection they had with uh, their actions um, that really kind of uh, really stuck with me. And... Um, you know, I just kind of love to make a film about just the really basic idea that this boy is doing what he's doing just because his dad is telling him to. On paper, uh, I think it's very easy to judge this character because what he does to these kids is terrible. You know, even I don't, I don't want to say too much. Uh, I think we very uh, earlier on in the process, we agreed uh, with Ariel that that guy has to, to really believe that he's doing the right thing for them. And that's what people do. I mean, that's what parents do. You know, we, we want to protect them, so we, uh, we try to put things in their head, thinking it's the best thing for them, and at the end of the day, sometimes it's not. And they have to defend themselves for all the goods we want to give them. Uh, it was a long, exhaustive process looking through uh, all sorts of kids um, in Australia. I guess part of creating the Nowhere Land, we were looking for kids in Australia with a non-Australian accent, um, which is uh, proved to be close to an impossible task because uh, kids uh, actually pick up accents very quickly, I learned. So even uh, some little boy who just come from Italy three weeks ago would already have an Australian accent. Um, so it was a long process and uh, towards the end, very close to the shoot, uh, I saw Jeremy's tape um, and he was in Sydney, and uh, he went to, we found him through a French school there. And he came in and did this tape, and it, uh, it floored us all, and uh, it was pretty clear. My dad always says, you d you, you d it wasn't a trouble for you playing this character. You're such a rebel. You're always, like, not listening to me. So <laughs> I guess, uh, yeah. But, yeah, it was a challenging role. It's not really about acting. It's about finding something to keep their attention. And, um, well, if you don't like kids, this is not the kind of project you should get involved with, that's for sure. Because they were like, how many we had? 20? Wow. 15, 16. 15, 16, and some really young, and some a little tough. But, uh, no, it, it's a lot of fun, actually, and uh, you have to do less, really, because it's really about playing with them. I was shot for five weeks in Australia and one week overseas. Um, and we had some incredibly strict uh, child laws in Victoria. Very mundane stuff, but um, it impacts the whole movie in a big way. So we had a lot of kids. We had Jeremy in every scene. That was probably the biggest challenge with production. Annoying kids, loud kids. There was a few troublemakers. But it's, I mean, if you like chaos, and I think uh, Ari really likes chaos, uh, it's, it's a nice element to play with at the end of the day.